Well, good evening and welcome to the launch of the Iota Phi Lambda Sorority Epsilon Size Chapters new video podcast, She Means Business. Since this is our first podcast, we just kind of want to let you know a little bit about Iota Phi Lambda Sorority Incorporated, in case you didn't know who we were. But we are the first African-American business sorority founded in 1929 in Chicago, Illinois. Um, the organization was promoted to promote professional and business women. And so we strive to continue to do that in the Middle Tennessee area, and that's the Epsilon Side chapter. If you want to know a little bit more about us, go out there to iota1929epsilonside.org, um, and you can reach out and you know find out a little bit more about us. All right, so now that we have that official, we have something great in store for you tonight. We are chatting with two very amazing women uh, that are both recent contributing authors. Uh, tonight, we're just going to talk a little bit about it and get to know them and get to know a little bit about the books that they were um, co-authoring. All right. So I'm going to kick this off and start with Averell. So Averell Smith, aka the Toxicity to Authenticity Coach, is a former ma matchmaker. Let me say it again. She is a former matchmaker right? And certified dating and relationship coach. And she is the founder and CEO of Seeking Synergy. She's an administrative officer by day and a mom to two grown adults, a boy and a girl. And Avril has had a deep commitment to helping single women navigate the dating scene with confidence. And we need a lot of that. Okay. Um, most recently, she became a contributing author of the new best-selling book, Everyday Women's Guide to Living Your Best Life, and she did that with 31 other dynamic women. So we're excited to talk to Averell a little bit more tonight. Welcome, Averell. Hi, ladies. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. All right. Also joining us is our very own member of Iota Phi Lambda Sorority Incorporated, and she's also a mover and shaker in Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated as well. Kenya Adams is the CEO and founder of The Panty Buddy. You guys will want to know a little bit more about Panty Buddy tonight and start shopping. Um, and she started that in March 2020 as a result of what? COVID, because 2020, we know that. By day, she is a healthcare executive and an entrepreneur and a mom to three very active boys. Kenya loves telling the Panty Buddy story. She's won several pitch contests and been featured in the U.S. Patent Office's Inventors Digest magazine. She is also, again, a contributing author of the new best-selling book, Secrets of Successful Women Inventors. Welcome, Miss Kenya. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I know. That's the shortest version of these bios because these ladies have done some dynamic things. So you want to learn more about them, Google them, or we'll have some links to some more of them um, as well on our page. But I am so inspired uh, to talk to you ladies tonight. So let's kick this conversation off. All right. All right. So I've got a few questions that I think will help, you know, educate our, our, our listeners tonight. Um, and again, I'm truly intrigued about this matchmaker thing, right? But tell me, how did you become a, a matchmaker? And then how did you venture into being a co-author of this new book? So actually, I I got thrusted. I like to use that word thrusted into this industry, um, honestly, because of a divorce, right? You'd be amazed at how our life experiences can make or break us. And I decided to let that experience make me rather than break me. So I started a, I became a co-owner of a small matchmaking company here in Atlanta. Unfortunately, that didn't work out because not everyone is, you know, designed to be a business owner. And so, you know, hence I branched out on my own. That's when I decided to become a certified dating and relationship coach. Um, and in terms of co-authoring a book, the power of networking, right? When you when you connect with the right people, when you connect with other people, women entrepreneurs, that is how that actually came to be. In um, you surround yourself with people who align with who you are, who are business oriented, who are 
um, focus driven on achieving your life's goal and purposes. And so I, I was in the right place at the right time, got the opportunity to co-author this book, and I'm actually about to start writing my chapter for co-authoring my second book. So I'm pretty oh. excited about that. Well, that's amazing. What was was being an author ever in your vision board? You know, I know a lot some people have vision boards. Was that ever in yours? It absolutely was years and years ago. I think I can still remember having a composition book with what I started as what would have been my first book. It's in a closet somewhere, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely it has been in my vision. And this was, I guess, the stepping stone, the starting. Mm -hmm part of the process you know you crawl before you walk so yeah well yep again some of us are still crawling so we're gonna you know listen to this and figure out what kind of advice and tidbits we could take from again some YouTube yeah. dynamic ladies um and so again tell, talking to us a little bit about the book because I know there again it's 32 women um you know tell us the foundation of the book what you know why should readers run out there and try to Google this on Amazon and go get it? Well, so like you said earlier, the the um, the title is Everyday Woman's Guide to Living Your Best Life. And it's all about unlocking the secrets of living a life of joy, purpose, passion, and abundance, success. You know, um, we all, I believe, have a life purpose, right? We may not always know what it is. Sometimes it's kind of it kind of makes it way to the forefront of our mind, of our lives, but it's about creating that life of purpose and passion. The book is about discovering tools and techniques to, to you know, for positive to transform your life. It has practical exercises to get you started, mm. um, life changing stories from real people, proven strategies for achieving your goals. And you know, it how to make the most out of your time, your resources, and the talents that you've been given. So it's a pretty powerful book. And my chapter is on your communication potential because honestly, no one teaches us how to communicate effectively. We kind of stumble along the way, we kind of fumble along the way. And so my chapter is very near and dear to me because, like I said, no one honestly teaches us how to communicate effectively. And in the communication, because it's dating, is it tidbits of just about communicating with in relationships or communicating in sort of our everyday life? It covers the gamut of communicating mm -hmm. effectively. Um, it talks about um, building trust with your partner. You know, I don't think people realize the importance of cultivating trust in relationships. And it also talks about resolving conflict constructively, right? Conflict is a natural part of any relationship. So I don't think most people realize that under the umbrella of the communication process, right? It involves resolving conflict, like I said, constructively and also building trust. And so in my chapter, there are science-based strategies of how to come how to resolve conflict and how to build trust with your partner. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I know I have seen, I'm sure both of you have seen relationship breakdowns and breakups, right? Because of lack of communication. And it is, it is so super duper important to learn how to communicate, right? And so I was very passionate about writing on that particular topic. And so, yeah, those are just some of the reasons why ladies go out and get this book. It is a must have and a must read. I know I can use some of those tidbits. I know Miss Kenya being, you've been married for 23 years. Awesome. Oh. You see my someone, crown right here? Right here. <laughs> yes. Someone has mastered the art of communicating with with Mr. Adams. <laughs> it's an everyday learning process, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Ongoing. <laughs> yeah. And I, like I said, you're you're you are the estrogen in a room full of test in a house <laughs> full of testosterone. That has come with its share of communication challenges. What's your what what would you say, you know, talking to a single woman as well? What's 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 the what's yeah, the secret? You, you know they they just they think differently from us, right? So we have to try 
to really um, come at it from their perspective when we're communicating with them. That's one of the things that um, I frequently step back and do and, you know, say, hey, here's here's how I see it. Can you explain to me how you see the same thing? Because <laughs> a lot of times it may be very, very different. Um, the way that, uh, you know, my, my partner, my husband, the way he sees things. So yeah. we frequently talk about it from, you know, let me help you understand my vantage, my viewpoint, and then you help me understand your viewpoint as well. Yeah. And, you know, that's, a, you know, when I listen to you, I say that's almost the, the same thing you have to do in business, right? Like at work. Yeah. Because yeah. a you lot of the same it? techniques. A lot of the same techniques because you are dealing with people who have varying opinions, varying, um, you know, <laughs> varying opinions <laughs> and how you can always impose your um, opinion and really open and foster the lines of communication. So I know as as we're listening, how do we take some of those same communication tidbits and use them not just at home, but how we use that um, in the workplace? How do we use that in organizations that we're, we're a part of? Uh, because I know a lot of organizations run as businesses, right? That's, you know, they have leadership roles. And, and um, so then you have to use that same communication style. So I know I still practice all uh, the Many years, I'm not gonna put numbers there. <laughs> <laughs> Number of years that I've been around. So now that that's great to hear. I think um, definitely cop that so we can we can get some some tidbits. So I'm gonna stick to since I was asking you that question, Kenya. Let's talk a little bit about how your book and how that book came to be. How did Panty Buddy become a product that so many of us have in our our bathrooms and and in our bedrooms. <laughs> yeah. So, so so the secrets of successful women inventors is the name of the book, and it uh, unlike Ariel, I had no visions of being an author. I never saw that for myself. Um, but I've always been able to write very well. Uh, a technique that got me by in college because I could crank out a ten page paper like nothing. Right. That was never nice. hard for me. Um, but never saw myself really um, writing a book um, and, you know, it just was not on my radar. But um, this little idea that I had um, I, I probably about five or six years ago that is now known as the Panty Buddy has um, changed my life in so many ways and opened up so many doors and avenues for me that I am just boldly walking by faith. And um, half the time, I don't know what I'm doing, but I am letting the Lord lead me. And so um, the various different roads and avenues that I'm traveling, um, one of them, which is this book. Um, and so I um, was able to meet a, a lady who um, wanted to do a, a magazine article on me um, because I invented this product called the Panty Buddy, which is a public restroom kit designed for women to make sure that we have everything we need to use a public restroom. So with the Panty Buddy, yeah, it comes with an emergency supply of toilet paper, toilet seat covers, hand sanitizing wipes, and there is a panty protecting strap that you can use to um, leverage as you squat or sit, and it holds all your underwear, your pants, keeps it from touching the floor, helps you not have to do that crazy squatting, balancing act thing that we do <laughs> when we're in a public restroom. The panty buddy holds it all together for you. Um, and so I was bold enough um, a few years ago to really embark upon what I wanted to see. Um, I traveled a lot for work. Um, I would always find myself in public restrooms and airplanes and airports with luggage and all this stuff. And, it, you know, like one day travel. So you don't really have too much, but you got enough just to be bothered kind of thing. Um, and so trying to maneuver in those little tight, cramped airport restrooms, making sure my flow went where it needed to go and I was holding it all together. So I was struggling a little bit. 
and um, started looking for a product that would help me um, because the worst thing in the world for me is to use a public restroom and then I don't even think about it until it's time to reach for the toilet paper and then I don't have any. And then it's like, oh my God, or I need to sit and there's no toilet seat cover and you know, all these different things. We get a, a myriad of, of situations we find ourselves unprepared for when we go into a public restroom. Um, and so I started looking all over Amazon and Walmart and my favorite Target and all these different places, started searching online. Surely there's something out there that can that I can just carry and just kind of help me out. And I didn't find anything. Um, and so then I started really thinking about um, making something. But what would happen um, for me is that um, that negative self real kicked in. And so, you know, the one ladies where you think, well, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And then you start thinking, well, I'm, I'm not this and I'm not that. And I don't have, how can I do this? And how can I do that? I don't know how to do it. And all that stuff kicked in for me. And so I went um, probably a couple years thinking about this idea um, before I actually acted upon it. Um, and then I finally decided to make myself a prototype. Um, so I bought a, a, you know, a little boy's wallet and a dog leash and some Velcro that I stuck on and uh, stuff that would rolled up toilet paper and all this stuff. And um, it, it worked. It, the, the, con the prototype actually worked. Um, and so I started using that while I was traveling. And then I thought, well, maybe I could make this thing and make it be something. Um, but then again, that negative self real kicked in. You don't even know how to sew. How are you going to you know, sell something to people? How are you going to manufacture something? What are you going to do? On and on and on and on. And so I sat on it for another year or so. Uh, and then finally, when the pandemic happened, I found myself thrust at home, no longer traveling for work. Um, with plenty of time on my hands. And that was the clear moment for me to say, I'm going to do something with this idea. Um, long story short, was able to find a mentor to help me through the manufacturing process overseas. Um, she literally, we met every other week on Zoom and she gave me homework assignments and I would do them and meet with her that next week. And we we walked through this for about three or four months, um, hand in hand. Um, and eventually by December of that year, I had um, done enough fundraising through pre-orders of good family and friends. And I was able to place my first order in December of 2020. And it came, it shipped. I received it like February of 2021. And I was in business. <laughs> so... Uh -huh. With all of that, um, I started just really trying to put myself out there to market. It's a brand new concept. It's a whole new thing. What is this thing you're calling a panty buddy kind of thing? And I stumbled upon this lady who wanted to do an article for, on me about um, uh, my product because I had filed for a U.S. patent. And, and in the Inventors Digest, it's a U.S. patent office magazine. Um, and so she did a three a page spread article on Panty Buddy and all the great stuff about the Panty Buddy. And um, from there, she contacted me about six months later and said, hey, Kenya, I, I love your product. Um, I am writing this book and I'm pulling together all these phenomenal inventors and I want to include you as one of them. And so um, I am thoroughly um, honored to be featured in this book, um, The Secrets of Successful Women Inventors, because I am in it with such heavy hitters. And I, I almost feel, you know, kind of that little negative rule coming back, like, you know, you these people have been on Shark Tank and it, the 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 forward is written by Barbara Cochran. The, the, they've got some multi-million dollar businesses, uh, women who, who have made inventions um, that lead these, you know, these these big corporations um, that turn their inventions into um, million dollar ideas. Um, but then I remind myself, the panty buddy is just like the little engine that could, and I am exactly where I need to be in, in the right company. Um, and so there I lie in the middle of 20, I think it's 23 women authors 
um, in my chapter, chapter 14, and you can get it and read all about the panty buddy and all my the secrets and tips and tricks um, that I use to actually get through the invention process. That is that is a great, great story. I mean, inventing, you know, entrepreneur is already a big leap of faith, but then to go with, wait, I want to create my product from scratch is Yes. Like that, you know, yes. and it's not, you know, um, it's not, I tell people it's not easy, but it's not impossible either. So, you know, if it's something that you want to do, if it's something that, um, you know, there is a problem out there in the universe and you want to be the one to solve it, um, figure out what you need to do to make that happen. Um, you know, definitely I, I had a, uh, the lady who ended up being my mentor, um, I, when I first met her, it was a chance meeting and she was uh, giving a speech in front of, you know, a room full of folks. And she just kept saying, you've got that idea, act up on it, you know, do something with it. And I'm sitting there nudging my husband like, that's that bathroom thing that I keep talking about. I want to do kind of thing. And um, eventually, uh, she, you know, she said, when you leave here, you know, go and make your prototype, even if you got to get some duct tape and <laughs> cardboard paper and, you know, that kind of thing, just make it, just do something with the idea, make it, make it, make it, you know, put it in, uh, in a physical form. Mm -hmm. uh, and I left that conference and that's when I stopped and got all the supplies to make my prototype. And uh, a year later, um, I happened to run into her via a Facebook group. Um, and, um, I kept saying she looks familiar, but I don't know where I would know her from. She lives in Philadelphia. I, you know, I don't know where I would know her from and, um, started stalking her Facebook page. You know, I made an appointment to meet with her and, uh, you know, like we do, we kind of stalk the page. Let me see, let me see a little bit more about scroll, 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 found, scrolled all the way back far enough to find that she was actually the lady that a year prior I had sat through her. Um, her uh, speech on this uh, on this uh, entrepreneur talk that she was giving, and so when we it was funny because when we got ready to meet, you know, I had my time frame set up with her and all that, and so she's on there and she's like, "Well, yes, Kenya, let me tell you what I can do for you." And da, 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 da. and I'm like, "No, ma'am, you don't understand. Like, I, you are the reason this is even. I'm even, you know, reaching out to you at this point. Like, this has been a year in the making, and this is the full circle moment for me." And I am destined to be, you are destined to be my coach, you know, kind of thing. You don't have to tell me any of your accolades or anything you can do for me. This is going to, this is already preordained. And so we um, have become uh, dear friends over, you know, this, this length of time. She continues to lead the way and I continue to, you know, kind of go behind her and say, okay, what are you doing now? You know, watching yeah. her, her business grow and flourish and, um, uh, you know, looking at, as she's, uh, lays that path and that foundation looking to just walk in her footsteps so no, uh, it's been a journey for sure but you can do it you can definitely do it I would encourage everybody um, if you're passionate about something um, have an idea want to be able to um, get it out on the market whether it's a product or a service um, do the legwork uh, and, and you can definitely bring that thing to light yeah no that's that, that. Great. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Avril, because I think I, I was going to ask her as well as a coach, right? Have you had coaches, mentors to help you through moments of doubt? Oh, have you had them? I mean, I'm going to ask that question. I shouldn't assume. Have you had those moments of doubt uh, that King was just speaking about for taking that leap of, hey, I want to get into this business? And, you know, how did you coach yourself? Through it, or did you have a, a mentor and a coach also to help you? Absolutely. I have had two business coaches, right? Not one, two. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, as, as I was listening to Kenya, it's those self-sabotaging beliefs are real. You know, um, you have those days where you're like, do I want to keep doing this? Can I actually stay the course? Can I, can I hack it? Am I, am I cut out for this? And so part of my business coaching included having a mindset coach because our minds are our most powerful tool, right? What you think you believe, you speak those words and then your actions follow. Now, whether the end result is good or bad, it depends on your actions. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, absolutely. Coaches, 
as a coach, coaches also need coaches. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, and so, yes, having my business coaches as mentors have been instrumental to, you know, um, my coaching business success. But yes, there are those days where the self-doubt creeps in. Um, those days where you are doubting that you want to continue this journey. You want to hang back for a little, take a break, resume when you're quote unquote feeling up to it. But then, you know, reality kicks or you kick yourself or, you know, you kick yourself in the butt a little bit like, yeah. no, there's no taking a break. This is what you signed up for. You've got this. Just keep just keep pushing. Right. And another part of, you know, what is so instrumental in being successful in business is connecting and networking with the right people. Like when you have the right people in your corner, the support that you get, right, the motivation from them the inspiration you get from them just having them and knowing them knowing that they have your back it is it is just super duper important so you know like Kenya said yes those days of self-doubt but yes you just, yeah. you just gotta you just gotta believe you have faith you know you I, I I like to tell people we all have that God-given inner strength sometimes you have to dig deep find and harness it and I've yeah. had to do that believe me so what if that listener sitting there going, well, how do I even get a coach? How do I get a mentor? Like, do they have to have the title mentor in there? Like, how, how do I even get that started? What would you, what advice would you give that person? Well, you'd be surprised at the power of just knowing someone who knows someone else, right? So you may not even need to go on Google searching for that mentor. You may actually have someone already in your circle who actually has a mentor that you know, that he or she can recommend to you. Um, I think my first business coach, I stumbled upon her um, on the internet, but her values aligned with me. And um, I just knew that she was, that she was destined to be my mentor. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, just have a conversation with the people in your circle. You know, they might actually know someone that they can recommend. Yeah. Um, you know, so you're not spending a lot of time trying to decide on a coach by Googling this person and that person on the internet, and then you talk yourself out of it. You don't want to do that. <laughs> right. Or it comes with a good price tag. So then you go, oh, can I afford that? Yeah. yeah it, does come with a, it does come at a price, which I also I think to, to your point and, and what I always look for is sometimes it just could be a pair you, you trust or former former manager or former leader that, you know, I would say, look for the person that you've taught you something Absolutely. inspired by, you know, um, and you can start, just start small. It doesn't have to be the full official coach, um, which I started to go through myself to, to really, because I started to decide I need, I need some development. Like I you keep pushing yourself, pushing yourself, but you need somebody to really help, help drive you. So I went to the official coach track, but for a moment, I, I was using some of my peers to bounce things off of. Um, again, being in, being in leadership roles, especially looking around and not having as many African-American women to, to lean on. That's, that's also a driver for, you know, some of the organizations we have, not just in middle Tennessee, but anybody else in there in, in cities that can look for organizations like IOTA, um, 100 black men, women, I'm sorry, 100 black women, mm -hmm. um, and some of those type of organizations that, that you can meet women um, of, a, of in the various leadership positions. So I encourage our listeners to, to seek that out. Um, I know we're almost running out of time. This conversation is so good. I kind of want to keep going, but what I'll do is just, kind of, you know, I want to be sure, is there any tips, tricks in the book that you want to highlight to anyone uh, tonight um, before we leave? They're still going to go get it. So let's just point blank. You still got to go out there, buy the book. But if there's something that, you know, you want to leave people with, you get advice or little tips from the book especially in the dating scene. I mean, I probably might need to have an offsite conversation with you about dating because it's rough out here. Anyway, um, is there anything else that you want to leave us with, Avril, first? Um, well, as it relates to some, um, you know, specifically on the chapter that I wrote, I think it's so important when we're communicating, right, to 
create an open and safe space for a partner, right? When we're communicating. Um, I think sometimes as women, we're not as conscious of the fact that our tone, attitude, and body language can play into the equation of how comfortable, you know, a partner feels communicating with us. What's also so important is to practice active listening, right? Um, as humans, we find ourselves formulating responses in our head to what the other person is saying, and we can't actively listen when we're doing that. But that is that is why God gave us two ears and just one mouth, so we can listen more and talk less, <laughs> right? <It's cute>. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and when we do that, you'll be amazed at how, for example, is willing to open up and communicate with you since men are usually, you know, described as not being good communicators, but that's not always the truth. And then another important tip as it relates to communicating and more so resolving constructive, sometimes you need to take a break to calm down, cool off. You may need a walk, a drive, right? But you don't just storm out of the room where you're talking. You let your partner know that you want to, that you need a break. And so you agree on a time to resume the conversation. Both of you have calmed down because as we know, cooler heads do prevail. Mm -hmm. That's some great advice. Although I keep saying I've got two lips and two ears, so it's kind of balanced. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I need to do better listening. Get, get, get the book. Get the book. <laughs> get the book, Alicia. Get the book. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you for that great advice. And I, I am reading the book too. All right, Miss Kenya, anything else you want to leave us about, Patty Buddy? And a visual, if you have it, I mean. Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I've always got Panty Buddy nearby. There we go. <laughs> um, so Panty Buddy comes in eight colors. This is a beautiful caramel color. Um, and when you open it up, this becomes your dispenser for your toilet paper. Um, there are uh, pockets where you can carry your ID, credit card, all that stuff. So it functions as a true wristlet. Um, but you always have toilet seat covers um, with you. And you always have hand sanitizing wipes. Um, it can be used to carry feminine hygiene products. You can stick that in there. And then this is that little panty protecting strap. So feel free to um, follow us on um, all social media outlets at Panty Buddy, um, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, all of that is at Panty Buddy. And you can check us out online um, at pantybuddy.com um, where we have a full uh, e-commerce retail store. Uh, there's how-to videos. It's easy as one, two, three to use your Panty Buddy. And there's uh, uh, tons of how-to videos out there um, to show you exactly what the product does. Um, but that's Panty Buddy. Um, and then I'll just say as far as closing secrets of uh, successful women inventors piece, um, my chapter is chapter 14 in the book. Um, and in that, um, it's called the inventor's journey. Um, and so I really walk through the process of inventing a product. Um, but then, uh, before I get into the technical pieces of it all, I talk a lot in that book around, um, just kind of the mental aspects of it as well. So, you know, overcoming kind of what we talked about that, that canceling the self-doubt piece, um, making sure that you're prepared, finding a mentor, um, getting organized, educating yourself around, um, uh, you know, around the various things in, within the industry that you're trying to tackle. Um, and then the very last thing is I encourage people to double down on you. Right. So bet on yourself 100 percent. Invest in yourself um, if it requires you to, um, you know, pay for someone to be your your coach or whatever. Um, going on and, and, and figure that thing out monthly and, 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 and make that investment in yourself. Um, it's better than buying McDonald's and Starbucks, I always say. So, um, you know, if you um, need um any help and guidance and assistance around that um i we can definitely list my contact information um once we get this out here but um i would be happy to talk to anybody who is looking to um invent a, a product and a lot, a lot of times with inventions we as inventors are very secretive about our stuff right so we don't talk a lot about what it is we don't want nobody to steal our idea right uh, but the reality of it is 
it, nobody else is going to do the work that you're going to do around it. So yes. nine times out of 10, your secret is safe. But um, but I am definitely a listening ear and would offer, you know, um, any advice that I could. Uh, but I would definitely tell you to get the book. I've got the book here. Um, it is Secrets of Successful Women Inventors. Um, Edie Chalchin is the um, is the uh, pinned author. Um, but there are over 20 stories in here and tips and tricks and a, a lot of good stuff at the end of the book as well that walks you through um, some of the fine points on um, being an inventor. So I would encourage you to definitely pick the book up that's available on Amazon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kenya. And I know again, Ms. Averill, um, your book is available on Kindle. Uh, so you yes. can get that and seek in synergy dot com yeah it's, so it so yes you can find me um on instagram at seeking underscore synergy for life my website is seeking synergy for life dot com yes um follow us on social media to learn dating and relationship tips you know the relationships are such an integral part of our lives and there are too many people suffering in silence and there's no need to Awesome. Well, I have both of you followed, so I am taking up my tips and tricks. And again, everyone, we will list uh, all our resources on this video as well. Bo again, both books are available on Amazon. So please go out and get them. I have personally had a great time chatting it up with these two amazing women. And I hope that you left a little inspired, right? Try to take that leap of faith for that next role, the next business you may want to start up, whatever that idea, write a book. I mean, anything that's on your to-do list. I know we're coming up on the new year and we're all going to start working on those vision boards and we're going to start working on those, um, what do you call those, resolutions. <laughs> so whatever that is, you know, I know I'm taking it personal advice because there are some things to take a leap of faith. All right. Well, that'll do it for tonight. Keep an eye on our social media page for our next podcast. I have no doubt that like this one, you won't want to miss it. Good night. Mm -hmm.